morning, Christ Rock. How are you doing this morning? Good. It is an honor to be here. It's good to be here um, in this series on miracles, the seven miracles of Jesus found in the Gospel of John. It's awesome. But I got to tell you, getting ready for, for this message has been hard and just felt like a lot of attack. And, and even this morning, um, if you're not in the discipleship group, get in one. I mean, that's what this church is all about, discipleship. And we've been in the same discipleship group for 35 years. So one of my accountability partners texted me this morning, Tim Thompson, his dad, Gary, was an elder here. Mom Kay is, is uh, still here. And um, he texted me this morning, he said, Bob, be the messenger of Jesus today. Because he knew I was preaching. And he said, Bob, I don't think it's a coincidence that the word messenger starts with mess. He said, you're fitted for this. <laughs> and really, it, it felt like that. But even on the way here, I got to tell you, got it all ready. And I, I don't know if you know the work that goes in on a Sunday morning and all the tech and all the work they do, but the speaker has to have their notes in by Thursday for the outline so we can get it up on the screen and have it all done. Can we give them another round of applause for all the work they do? So... I got the notes, the outline to them Thursday, but then I go through and I write all my notes in middle of the, the slide so that, that that can be ready. And now with technology, it's so cool. So finished up, polished up last night, if you will, and this morning I can go copy and then you can push speak and it can read it to me. So I did that. So I was listening to it on the way in three times on the way in this morning so I don't have to look at my notes as much. And the third time, I don't know what I pushed, but I deleted all the message. <laughs> oh, funny for you. <laughs> I was like a panic attack coming in this morning. Like, ah, so, um, you know, I know what happens after service. You go out to your car and go, so how did you like service? Well, the music was good. That one song they didn't have to do, and that one was kind of off, but that was okay. And the message, I don't know, I'll give it a four or five. You know, so I know we get critiqued. That's what we do, right? But I pray this morning, instead of critiquing me as much, here's what I'm going to ask. That really happened on the way, and I think it was a spiritual attack. I really do. But I'm praying that more than evaluating this service, may you continue as we just did in worship. Would you encounter the living God, even through this mess of a messenger? Amen? Amen. So let's do that. Um, last week I couldn't be here. I was preaching in another church, otherwise I would be here. But I went and listened to the message online, and Joel nailed it. I mean, what a great message. I don't know about you, but the teaching pastors here with Ben and Joel, they're, they're, Ben is sick at home, sick with their family. Joel's with his family. Just give them a round of applause one more time. Just the teaching that's been coming from this pulpit it's just a blessing. And last week, he taught on the loaves and the fish and the feeding of the 5,000. Then we learned from Pastor Joel that it was really more like fifteen to 20,000. And then the miracle happened, and they had all those coolers left over. Um, by the way, I filled up three of those uh, white bass fishing this week. <laughs> no, I went out with my son-in-law and a couple grandkids, and we caught 245 white bass. So... Fremont, Wisconsin, white bass capital of the world. And that wasn't even a miracle. All right. But I loved it. But I have to say this. Um, I think the real miracle last week was not even the one we studied in Scripture. I think the real miracle was 42 people getting baptized and transformed by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. I mean, let me tell you that there is no greater miracle than somebody coming from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And we got to remember that the gospel still changes lives. And we need to encourage them. And I think to see 42 people, and it doesn't seem like that long. We had one already this year of baptism. Let's continue to make disciples in the name of Jesus. So let's encourage those one more time that were baptized last time because there was a lot of students, a lot of the next generation, and I love that. But I got to admit this, I did chuckle, and I thought it was pretty brave of Joel to put on that picture from Costco, where it said water, and it was all wine, and then a little note, Jesus was here. <laughs> I'm like, that was awesome. So I thought I would start out, maybe not as good a one, but I thought I'd start out with a joke about last week's miracle, the fish and the loaves. Here it is. Daddy... 
How is it possible for Jesus to feed 5,000 people with only five loaves of bread and two fishes? And the dad says, Jesus created the entire universe. Making lunch was no problem. (laughs) And I love that, especially because it went where Pastor Joel went. And he said, do you believe that? Do you really believe that? And what matter does it mean if you believe that? So just one more joke. It goes like this. What happened to the guy who did not choose the bread of life? He was toast. <laughs> okay, that was bad. All right? And it's not funny if you think about it. But, but the reality is miracles did happen. And we're tested with this natural and supernatural. Will you believe in the, even in the midst of this day? So this week we're going to look at the miracle of Jesus walking on water. Right? Wow. Walking on water. Get that? W-O-W. Walk on water. <laughs> All right? Thank you. <laughs> walk on water. And what we're going to do is we're looking at it from the Gospel of John, but it's also in two other Gospels. So, Jesus walks on water. John chapter 6, verses 15 through 21. Matthew chapter 14, 22 through 30. And in your study this week, also look at Mark chapter 6, 45 through 56. So let me set this up a little bit. Jesus just finishes doing the miracle, right? He feeds all the thousands of people, right? There's all these leftovers. Then the disciples go down to the lake. I like them. They go down to the lake and they're going to get in the boat to go to Capernaum. They're going to go across the sea. And it says that Jesus, you know, is there. But Jesus goes back and he dismisses the crowds And then Jesus goes to the mountain to pray. That's in one gospel. The other gospel says in Jesus, and Joel talked about this last week, he was trying to escape from the crowds because they saw the miracle and they were trying to make him king before it was time. So you put that together, the miracle happens, guys are going down to go to Capernaum, they're in the boat, they're going across, it shouldn't take that long. Jesus dismisses the people, goes up to the mountain to pray, because he's got to fill back up, he's got to be with his father, and I hope we all follow that example of quiet time with the Lord. And then it says this, the disciples are on the lake, and a storm came, a huge wind that comes down through the mountains, and it just started pushing the boat. And it was pushing their boat out till when it says, it says that they were now four miles out. So they should have been there already, but the wind is beating them and they're four miles out instead. If you look at it, they've been battling, some experts say, they were battling that storm for nine hours. Nine, anybody else feel like that? You've been in the middle of a storm and you're feeling beaten up by the waves and you're rowing and you're rowing and you're not, you're going backwards. And then it says, it was three in the morning. Because that's the fourth hour. From three o'clock to six. So they left at, do- at, at dusk. And now for nine hours they're rowing and they're four miles out. I don't know about you, but you ever feel like this? I, I've tried to put myself in the place of those disciples. And wouldn't you think something like this? Really? We just saw you do a miracle. You bring us to the boat. You have all these lefters. We see this miracles. And you're going to let us die on the lake? That's not going to look good for your kingdom, Jesus. We're fishermen. Peter dies at sea <laughs> after a big miracle. Does anybody else feel like that? Penny, do you ever, like, just like, God, what's going on? You just did a miracle and now we're here stuck? There's a song by Casting Crowns. And let me tell you, they're one of my favorite groups. And a little shameless plug here, they're going to be at Life Fest on Thursday this year. And Casting Crowns, I've been on tour of them. I did their camp. They're the real deal. Um, and let me just say this. And if, if this, we're having a, a special evangelism initiative this year. Um, we found out, like, life promotion is all about evangelism. People know Jesus. But when we brought a consultant, we really found that the purpose of Life Fest was to celebrate the love of Jesus, mostly through music, and to unite the body of Christ. John 17, 21. 
Father, if they be one, even as you and I are one, then the world will know that you have sent the Son. So it is about evangelism, but it's really just about coming together. But this year we're like, you know what? Let's just really make an initiative. So on Saturday of this Life Fest, we have Andrew Palau coming. He's one of the evangelists that travels across the world doing evangelism. His dad was Luis Palau, and it's just amazing. And Toby Mack is playing that night. And I don't know if you know this, but Toby and, and Andrew are brothers, brother-in-laws. They married Jamaican sisters. And I don't know if you know this, but Toby's son died in the last year of an overdose. And his new album is called Life After Death. And it is just nailing it music-wise and the heart of it. And I thought, what, what if we got people together and just, you know, like, let's just bring people to hear the gospel that night. So there are tickets out here, the evangelism tickets, normally $48 to come for a day. But there's ones you can give to your friend for $10 so it has some value to them and say, come, I'm personally hoping that 3,000 new people hear the gospel for the first time Saturday night. And so I'm asking, no, no, please, if you think this is just Bob Plug and Life Fest, spiritually blow me off right now. But if you think that maybe God is up to something and maybe this is a tool for you to use to reach somebody who might not know Christ, then jump on board. Let's go and do this in the name of the kingdom and set it forth. And even if you're in that time, you feel like you're beaten up by the, by the wind and you're being beaten, then listen to the song, the sound, the, the words of the song from Casting Crowns. I was sure by now that you would have reached down and wiped these tears away, stepped in to save the day. But once again, I said Amen. And it's still raining. As the thunder rolls, I barely hear you whisper through the rain, I am with you. Anybody else there? Anybody else having a hard time hearing his voice because the wind is so loud and the waves are so high? But finally they heard him, right? So they're getting beat up and all of a sudden they look and here's Jesus walking on the water, right? Right? They're like, instead of going, wow, cool. You know what they did? It's a ghost. I'm like, really? Right, well, I, I guess. You ever, ever been up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you can't sleep? And your mind is just spinning? And all these thoughts come to you like, oh, no, it's a ghost. I'm like, it's Jesus. I'm like, why didn't they recognize him? Can I tell you why? They didn't recognize him because they weren't looking for him in the storm. They saw him in the miracle. They saw him when everything was good. They saw him when their tummies were full. But now in the storm, where's the sovereign God? I pray this. I pray we look for him in the storms of our life because he is there. He is there at three o'clock in the morning. He's there in the middle of your anxiety. He's there in the middle of your panic attack. He's there in the middle of your pain and your struggle and your loss and your grief. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 2, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you travel through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Can I point something out? It says when you go through. It doesn't say if. Amen? It doesn't say if you go. It says when. The Bible is so clear. Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulations. If you still think coming to Jesus can make all your problems go away, open your eyes. I, I don't know about you, but sometimes being a Christian seems tougher. Right? There's more. But I do pray that you do this today. In the middle of your chaos, in the middle of your storm, I pray that you hear his voice today. Because first they thought he was a ghost, but all of a sudden Jesus said, it is I, do not be afraid. That's in John 6, 20, that's NIV. But I love the new, transla- the new living translation here, and I'm not sure exactly which way Jesus said it, but I love this version, because Jesus said, do not be afraid, I am am here. 
the days that you feel like Jesus has abandoned you, he's left you all alone in your problems, can I assure you that the word of God says, do not be afraid. Jesus says, I am here. In the middle of the storm, in the middle of this mess, in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of your pain. And then I hope you do what the disciples do. John 6, 21, it says this. So Jesus said, it is I, I am with you. I am here. And it says, they were eager to let him in the boat. And immediately they arrived at their destination. Will you invite Jesus into your storm? Will you invite, will you see him in the storm and invite him into your boat? Into your life? Into your situation? And it says immediately they're at their destination. Now I know as a, as a study of the word, that probably meant they were immediately at their destination. They're at Capernaum, right? They made it there. But I wonder, Peter, maybe is there maybe a deeper meaning? Maybe where they're saying, hey, what is your destiny? What is your final destination? What are you supposed to be about? Because isn't that what we're supposed to be about? Getting to our final destination? What's our purpose in life? Let's cross-reference with Matthew chapter 14. It says this. When they climb back into the boat, right? So Jesus gets into the boat and the wind stopped. And the disciples worshipped him and said, you really are the son of God. According to scripture, this is the first time that it's recorded that the disciples actually worship Jesus. So the purpose of this miracle, right? They're in the middle being beaten up for nine hours. They didn't say, why didn't you come earlier? As soon as they figured out, he said, I am here. They're like, get in the boat. Get in the boat, we need you. And they get in the boat, and for the first time recorded in Scripture, they worshipped him. I think it's also important to know that their worship was also with their confession. They said, you are the Son of God. May this church never stop preaching. There is one God, Yahweh, and he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus, to come to earth. And he died and for our sins and for yours. And he rose again on the third day. And he sent his Holy Spirit to live in our heart. And he is coming again. Amen. And that is the hope of the world right there. That's what you were made for. To worship him. To be a disciple. A loyal learning follower. To bow the knee and say, you are God. You are Lord. And to worship him. Maybe you're here today and you don't know him as your personal God. See the miracle of a changed life. See the miracles in the scripture. And may the Holy Spirit bring you to a point of belief. I would be saddened not to mention my own mom on Mother's Day. Here's a picture of my mom. I like Marcus, miss my mom. Many people called her Ma, Ma Lentz. So did we. <laughs> but my mom loved people. And more than loving people, my mom loved Jesus. And she was a worshiper. But in that era, my mom had never been out of Wisconsin, except for once. She went over to Minnesota. And all they had there were the Vikings. Skull! Oh, sorry. sorry, Chris. All right, anyways. When I started to travel, I'm like, Mom, you've got to come and see parts of the world. And so I brought my mom, and I brought her to the ocean. And she saw the ocean, look at this, for the first time. And my mom, for those who knew my mom, she makes me look like I don't like to cry. And the tears just rolled down her face. And all she could do was go, wow, wow, wow. For her, it was an act of worship to see creation and know that the creator made it. And to worship him by seeing the beauty of the creation. And so we named wow, W-O-W, without 
words. It is an act of worship because when you can get a lens not to talk, that's the eighth miracle. <laughs> but she would just say, wow, and it was a point of worship. That's what I pray for you. We don't just sing songs. We want you to enter. No, we know that God is always present, right? He's omniscient. That's his presence. But that's his omnipresent. There's also a manifest presence of God. And some reason, I don't understand it, but in worship, we know he's here. But you can encounter and bless his name and experience and have a relationship with the God of the universe. We long for every one of you to experience that. So then I brought my mom to the Rocky Mountains to Colorado for the first time. And I'll never forget, she saw the Rocky Mountains for the first time. And guess what? Just like why we come every week to worship, because it's fresh and new every Sunday. My mom, guess what she said? Wow. 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 She starts crying again. I just, I love you, Ma. But two minutes later, she's like, look, look, look. I'm like, what? Look. She's like, wow. I'm like, Ma, that's the same mountain. She goes, I know, but I didn't see it from this angle. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Why? Somebody said to me, Bob, you've been in ministry 40 years and you're still reading the Bible? Haven't you finished it yet? I'm like, I'm a slow reader. <laughs> no. Every day his word comes alive. Be in the word every day to worship the word of life, the son of God, the bread of life to see his miracles in you. And I'm like, wow. So wow can now stand for without words. See, when you see a miracle, Joel said it's so great last week. You see a piece of heaven. Maybe it's not supposed to be a disruption. Maybe it's a way to see how it's supposed to be. Already not yet. Kingdom is here, but it's still coming. And one day, everything is going to be the way it's supposed to be. And we long for that day. And because even if now you're in chaos, we can sing it as well with my soul. Amen? We can sing it as well. Because one day he's coming again, and he's going to wipe every tear away. So now wow can stand for without words or walk on water. This group, how many have watched Chosen? If you haven't, go and watch it. I'm sorry, you remember the mess of Messenger? Chosen has done such a good job of showing the reality of just a bunch of guys and gals that are messed up, but that Jesus can transform their lives. I mean, I just, I just love it. And when these 12, when they really saw that he was God, and they bowed down to him and said, you are God, you are Lord, and they worshiped him. God took this 12 people, the mess that they were, and they changed the world for the good. Amen? And the gospel today is still changing lives. There's a scripture that I'd like you to look at. It's in Acts 17. And this is out of the Berean Bible. And it says, these are the people who have turned the world upside down. And now they've come here. So they're like, they're causing trouble everywhere. They're turning the world upside down. Let me ask you something. How many feel that the world's a mess right now? Right? How many feel like it's so messed up and the Bible's come true and they're calling right wrong, and they're calling wrong right, and the world is so confused, and the narrative is so messed up. It's like the world is upside down, and it needs to be right-sided. Will you be a part of turning the world upside down for the Lord Jesus? Will you be a part of changing this valley for Christ? Will you be a part for changing Wisconsin in our country for Christ? But the word wow how do you spell it? Right? Walk on water without words. Turn it upside down. Ah. Mom, we do this all the time. Like, well, when something happens, we'll go, wow, mom. Because let me tell you this 
God wants to move in miracles today. He wants the supernatural to come to the natural. And it's not going to be the way you think. Maybe not in some flashy miracle, right? Maybe not in some power or position. You know where he's going to do it? In the everyday. Through moms and dads and brothers and sisters and friends. And small groups and discipleship groups. That's where it will be. Maybe this is just men, but guys, I got a little bone to pick with you. So many times when I, my kids were small, I'd say, hey, can you get together Friday night? And they'd say, ah, oh, sorry. I'm like, well, what are you doing? They're like babysitting the kids. Can I make something real clear? You don't babysit your own kids. You parent them. You're a mom or you're a dad, amen? We got to really start seeing that that's what we got to do. No, I know my wife, she's been a rock star as a mom, and I've been gone a lot on the road traveling, and, and I'm so thankful for my kids, and by the grace of God, they're all following Jesus, but when I came home off the road, I, I wanted to be there and, and help some, you know, so, you know, picking the kids up from school, right? Doesn't that feel like you're always driving? Like, I, I didn't even know. I worked for Uber before there was Uber. And I never got a five-star from them. And they never said thank you or gave me a tip. <laughs> so I'm in a little, little shoot, picking them up at the elementary school, right? And they get out at three, and I'm there. And already the line's a mile long, so it goes all the way to Kakana. <laughs> and I'm waiting in line. They're supposed to be out. And finally, people are picking up their kids. And I get up in front of the school. Oh, it's 3.15, 3.20, and everybody's out except my kids. Now, this is a confession, but maybe I'm not the only one. Would you get a little irritated if you're there 15 minutes, your kids weren't there yet? I'm like, where are they? And suddenly, pride or something like, don't they know how important I am? <laughs> don't they know I have sermons to write? I have calls to make. I have festivals to plan. I have travel to make. And the Spirit of God just gently spoke to me and said, Bob, whoever is faithful in these little things, I will entrust you to greater things. And I'm like, oh, all right, God, I'll be a faithful dad. And I could see it now. Another festival overseas. Maybe my next book would sell better. They haven't sold good since my mom died. <laughs> and I start thinking all these things. And then the Spirit of God spoke to me again. But this time a little firmer, still loving, but harsh. And he said, Bob, you got it upside down. You got it all wrong, Bob. The big stuff isn't being on stage. The big stuff isn't your position. The big stuff isn't the festivals. Loving these kids is the big stuff. And I had to turn my thinking upside down. That's called metanoia. That's called repentance. Can we give another round of applause to moms that are saying this is what matters and they're loving their kids as worship? Because that's, that's the miracle. I know I gotta hurry up here, but I gotta tell you this story of my friend. In the early days of the ministry when we had Christ to Rock and, the, and before Life Promotions, it was called Solid Rock. We were out on a, we, would, we had to do a fundraiser. And because we were friends with Jack's Pizza, we thought, let's sell pizzas door to door. <laughs> so that's what I did. And we were promoting our 24 hour hotline, Lifeline. And we're going door to door, and we did. We sold pizza, had a good time. But I met this lady, and her name was Donna. It still is. <laughs> and Donna bought some pizzas, but I got to ask her about her life, and she said she was a mom, and she wanted to be a mom so bad that she ran her business out of her home, that she could be there for her kids. Now, please tell me. Please, I know that there's a lot of debate. You know, can I just make some real clear, clear? I don't believe in housewives. My wife married me. She's my wife. I'm her husband. She has chosen to be a homemaker and to stay home. 
I think women should have the freedom to be who God's created them to be. If that's in the workplace, awesome, praise God. If that's at home, because of the next generation, I think we can give them affirmation, amen, and say, do what God's called you to do. So Donna worked her business out of her home so she could be there for her kids. And her business did really well. But I think what's even more impressive is the influence that she had on people throughout this world. There was a book that was written about influential women. And they had one chapter was Oprah. Two chapters later was Mother Teresa. The chapter in the middle was my friend Donna. And they wrote about her in there. I got to tell you this. When I was asked by Pastor Ben to speak, I asked what day, and I got to check with my calendar and make it work. And he said, it'd be on Mother's Day. And I'm like, what's the topic? He said, walk on water. I said, wow. <laughs> but can I be honest with you? I've been going through a really rough storm of my own. And I feel like I've been battered by the storm for a lot longer than nine hours. And I feel like I'm going backwards. And the church has been in a rough season. In 40 years of ministry, I just don't have a lot left. And I feel depleted. But God, in his goodness, tells me that the sermon is about the Jesus walking on water. My friend Donna calls that day. And it's the release of her book, her first book that she ever wrote. Guess what the name of the book is? My mentor walks on water. You can't make that up. That was a sign from God to say that I was supposed to be here this morning, that I was supposed to bring his word and declare it, that God still does miracles, and God is still for this church. So my friend, that book has since went to number one on Amazon. And it's making a difference in this world. You can get that book out on my table today. Donna's here. She'll sign it for you. She's from Appleton. She went to Appleton East. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. But let me tell you this. It's not just for women. Matter of fact, when Donna's in town, because I always say she lives all over the world. Her husband's from Sweden and they've... They're in Arizona and they're in the Caribbeans and they're all over the world doing what she does now. But when she's here, she comes. When she's home, she comes here. And her brother Greg is a part of this church. And he just, Greg just gave out 30 copies to the men's group that meets on Saturday. And they're going through that book. So I'm going to I'm going to encourage you, go and buy her book today. Go and meet her. She'll sign it for you. Buy it for your mom for Mother's Day, right? Buy it. Go out there. But it'll tell you this, you can also be a part of turning the world upside down. Not just by reading the book, and it will. I just did a podcast with her in chapter 4. In the book, and it's written to leaders, in chapter 4 it talks about how to receive Christ. It's just amazing. But you know why you would turn the world upside down? All the proceeds from the book are going to go to Spirit Wings Kids for orphanages in Africa and in India. My own daughter Amber went with Donna to Africa and saw the good work that they're doing. Let me tell you this, turn the world upside down. Her mentor walks on water and so does ours. But what I wanna do is this, I wanna go through the lessons in closing and I'm gonna ask the worship team to come back with Marcus. And I wanna show you what we just learned and maybe you can't follow my sporadic thoughts, but here are the four lessons we just learned from Jesus walking on the water. Number one, 
Miracles call us to acknowledge Jesus as God. Miracles cause us to acknowledge that Jesus is God. Will you confess it if you never have? Will you confess that he is Lord today? Will you give him lordship of your life? Lesson number two. Miracles invite us to worship Jesus with our whole life. That's called discipleship. Worship him in praise, but worship him with your actions. Miracles also ask us to look for Jesus in the storms of life. It's not a ghost. He is there in the middle of your chaos. He is there in the middle of your pain. And number four, you can be the people. We can be the people that turn the world upside down by walking on water, by seeing God do miracles and seeing wow without words turn into mom, dad, brother, friend in the roles that he has brought you to bring the supernatural down to the natural so we can point to the one true God again. You know, I didn't even get a chance to talk about Peter. I thought about Peter going, you know, not Peter Lesky, but Peter the apostle because he walked on water. But it's not even mentioned in, in the book of John. Right, you gotta go to Matthew. But when he was, right, when they saw him, they asked him in the boat and the, they worshiped him and they declared him as Lord. But in the other story, Jesus, he sees Jesus and says, if it's really you in the middle of this storm, tell me to come to you on the water. Tell me to walk on the water. And everybody gets down on Peter because he started to sink later. But may I point out, he's the only one that got out of the boat. Would you get out of the boat today? In the middle of your storm? He didn't wait till the storm stopped. In the middle of the storm, Jesus said, come. Come to him in the middle of your storm. And you know what you're going to see? Not only does Jesus walk on the water, you can walk on the water of the storms of your life. And he walked on water. You are a miracle of God. But then what happened? He heard the wind. He saw Marcus. He saw the waves. And he took his eyes off Jesus. And he looked at the headlines. He looked at the media. He looked at the world. He looked at his pain. And he started to what? He started to sink. But what he does next, I think is even more impressive than him walking on water. Because he starts sinking and he goes, save me. Lord, save me. I can't do it anymore. I don't know about you, but that's where I am. I can't do it anymore. I don't have any fight left. I don't want to fight. And I'm sinking. And I feel depleted. But all I can do is throw up my hands and say, save me. You are worthy of it all. Will you worship Jesus today? Will you surrender? And I, I know it doesn't sound like an analogy that fits with water, but I gotta share one in closing. And I'm always sorry that you come to second service because I always go longer. But when Peter started to sink, he didn't start dog pellowing and just flapping his arms and trying to make it. So many of us, when we're sinking, we try harder and try harder and feel shame and try harder. Peter just said, save me. Will you do that today? There's an Andean condor from the mountains of the Andes. This bird weighs 30 pounds. He has a wingspan, watch this, of over 10 feet. They've studied this bird, and they have found that it has traveled 500 miles with ever, without ever flapping its wings. It just rides on the air. 
or if you would, rides on the Spirit. The bird only flaps his wing 1% of the time. Check out your life and mine. How many of us are just trying to stay afloat and we try harder and harder instead of just raise your hands, another hallelujah, and say you are worthy of it all. I'm going to ask you to stand right now. Would you stand with me in closing? And no matter what storm of life you're in, would you just not try harder? Believe the gospel. He invites us to say, you are Lord. Miracles invite us to worship him. Miracles invite us to see him in the storm. And miracles call us to be the people who turn the world upside down. Would you just declare him as Lord? And in worship, would you raise your hands and say you are worthy of it all? Wow. Without words, an act of worship. In Jesus' name. You are worthy of it all. deserves the glory. Let's give him a praise clap today and thank him. He deserves all the glory and all the praise. And we are grateful. Let's thank Bob. Show our appreciation to him this morning. Thank you, Bob, again for coming and sharing from your heart. We got the photo booth for moms. We got the table for life promotions and Donna's book. We have got a message next week on Jesus healing the blind man. And if you need prayer, Come on up. There are people who are happy to pray with you this morning. Have a blessed Sunday and Mother's Day. We'll see you next week.